This is Bristol Metropolitan Academy, an inner city secondary school whose philosophy is your spoken language matters. With over 50% of the school's population being made up of EAL pupils, it's a philosophy that has a positive impact upon the school, particularly in MFL. David Spence is an assistant principal and the director of language learning at the school. The things we have in place to actually address some of the difficulties around delivering MFL are whole school. New arrivals to, to the country have um, particular support in EAL. Um, in, in small group where very, they, they're given very intensive tuition in basic English. Having said that, in the MFL classroom, we don't think um, not knowing English is a barrier to language learning. It's very important to give students the appropriate kind of diet of language. Um, we've got a diversity of provision here, which isn't just the kind of traditional European model of language, which we think best fits some of the backgrounds of our students. In Year 7, we offer, for the first time this year, Polish, and we also offered Arabic, which is very popular amongst some of our students who uh, perhaps find French or German less relevant to, to where they come from. And I think that, plus some of the, the other things we have in place, like asset languages, uh, helps us to actually uh, provide for the needs of those students much better. Asset Languages is a, an accredited scheme run through the OCR exam board. Some of our students come from um, cultures where they speak languages that aren't available through GCSE, like Hindi, like Somali, and we think it's really important to actually give our students the opportunity to achieve and to achieve well in their home language. This is a Somali asset language lesson being taken by Abdi Wise, who is the Somali speaking teacher at the school. All the children in the class are from Somalia, but usually come via different countries in Europe. During this time, the children often receive little or no schooling. Therefore, basics in the language must be addressed, like reading, grammar, and pronunciation, which is often very poor. In today's lesson, the children will be reading a passage in Somali ensuring that the pronunciation of the vowels is being spoken correctly. Omar today is very happy because it is his birthday party. It's his birthday, yeah. yeah. Today, he became what? 13 years old, yeah. What he's doing? He's celebrating. He's celebrating his birthday party. That's it. Omar, Sifi and Malimat the Umar de Gisenayu. He's not listening to the teacher because he's excited, exactly. Okay, one of them, Minuta Nakrena. Okay, read up this. Casabella Hagahora. Karen. Asset languages is available at various levels from a kind of beginner's level which is called breakthrough up to a kind of slightly harder level called preliminary up to then intermediate which is really the equivalent of GCSE. Even if they only speak or um, have an understanding of a particular language so even if they've got no written understanding of the language they can do asset language exams in the speaking and the listening at uh, intermediate level and it's the equivalent of half a GCSE. Um, and we think that's really important to give our students the opportunity to do that. Not least because it gives them a massive boost in terms of their self-esteem. It gives them a real symbol of success that they're, and also that their language has a, ha, is recognised in our school community. To actually then give them something positive early in their school career is, is something fundamental for us. The team of staff in um, the languages subject area are, are not predominantly white British at all. We have a complete mixture of, of staff in terms of ethnicity and backgrounds. Um, we have foreign nationals from France and Germany and allied to that we have two support workers who um, assist students with their Somali uh, and much more. Um, a Polish support worker as well who teaches Polish. Um, two of my colleagues are of Arabic background so they speak Arabic as well, one teaches it. So we are 
a complete cosmopolitan mix of ethnicity and, and language backgrounds, which I think gives the students the sense that, that languages have a place in the wider world and that they're, they're not just European-based and that they can enrich everyone, really, that they can enrich individuals and they can enrich people's lives, really. As well as promoting a positive message to the children, having such a selection of multicultural staff helps bridge any support issues that the children might experience in school. Today, we're going to be looking at, so that's the human body, we're going to be looking at the skeleton. skeleton. The skeleton. Well done for remembering that. So, here we go. Skeleton in Somali and in English. Our support workers are absolutely critical to what we do because um, there are difficulties around communication. In the lesson yesterday, it's a bilingual lesson where the students um, receive tuition in, in Somali and English to actually bridge some of the gaps in their knowledge in, in some of the core subjects. So, Mr. Wise is there to actually provide language support, which clears up any, any conceptual difficulties, because a lot of these students have had broken education. Right, okay. So, uh, let's see then. Uh, yeah. Ahmed, do you want to read that? The smallest bone in our body is in, in, is in our ear. Good, you corrected yourself really well. Well done. This is uh, yeah. quite complicated, mm. but the bones are actually here. We can't see yeah. them, can we? Mark, I'm not sure. They, they provide very practical support in terms of things like translating letters that go home. They follow up any issues around school with, with phone calls. So they are really important for our community cohesion in actually liaising with home. In school, they're a role model, obviously, for a lot of these students. Someone to turn to, someone to actually go to if there are problems, um, if they don't feel comfortable going, going to other teachers. Um, more and more also we've, we've begun to use them in, in twilight, so what's what we call after school lessons to actually um, go over coursework and uh, they've actually provided an important um, focus for revision to actually explain some of the things in their coursework, help them with that conceptually before the students then actually carry on with their coursework. So it's a multifaceted role really, but a really important one. My first language is Somali, and then after that I've learned English, obviously because I'm in England, and now in school I'm currently learning Arabic, and I've learned a bit of French in year, from year 7th year nine as well. We only used to speak our own language, but now we learn German, French, I can do Hindi, Punjabi. Um, at the moment I'm doing English and German, but I know about Russian, Polish and I think Somali and that's, that's the language. It comes back to the core message, which I think we try to give to the students, that if they're good enough, if they're able, not being from uh, an English-speaking background is no, absolutely no hindrance to success. By year 10, it's typical to see EAL pupils progressing well within languages at the school. In fact, most have already gained a GCSE or accreditation in their first language and have gone on to learn further languages not including English. Now, you're going to split off into groups and you're going to be a role but it's not as exciting as it might sound because everyone who plays B is called Mr or Mrs Morza <laughs> okay now here's the script I'm going to show you the script so A okay you are the manager of a new conference center in Brighton you welcome Mr or Mrs Morza from Cologne University who's planning a conference at your centre for next spring. And they're going to actually talk about booking it, booking the conference centre, OK? Three of the students in that group are from different backgrounds, actually. One is a uh, Somali girl, one is from India, and the other one from Poland. And learning German is at least their third language, if not their fourth. What they do is they make connections between various different languages for, I know, for, for example, I know Hanan studies French and German, which are completely different in terms of, obviously, sound, in terms of vocabulary, in terms of grammar, in terms of the word order, and she adapts to those challenges without any problems whatsoever. Adrian Simile, who's um, he's done French, he did French ASSET um, last year, he's already got um, Polish GCSE and he's doing Polish A-level. 
Ja, bitte. Guten Tag, Angelein. Guten Tag. Mein Name ist Herr Lose. Ich bin Herr Bukowski, ich bin Leiter. Ich mache eine Konferenz nach der Fühle. Yeah, it's well, given them a confidence to actually um, think on their feet, to, to be spontaneous in the language, to, to not fear new things. It's given them a confidence about themselves that's, that's beyond the language, beyond any language, that languages enrich people's lives and they actually give them so much inner confidence and, and self-esteem. And you see that in their learning, you know, they just, they're there, they take things on board really quickly and they, they're not phased by anything. I think one of the key things is to engage students from an EAL background is to recognise their home language. I think that's absolutely essential. Some of the um, whole school policy making has contributed to that massively. We have a dedicated member of staff who um, is accredited to the Asset Languages Scheme and he's in charge of community languages. He um, helps them with any gaps in their knowledge. We, we organise twilight classes if we need to for um, teachers to come in and actually use the, the language college budget money to, to pay for that tuition. It's the end of the day and the pupils are making their way home. Well, not all of them. Twilight classes are extra MFL lessons put on after school by teachers and support staff and are very popular. Here the children can get extra tuition, work on coursework or prepare for exams. One of the things that we're, we're really keen to do at the, at the moment is to further develop um, community languages. So we, we really want to, to push on with Polish and Somali in the main curriculum. That's been a, it's been a big success this year and obviously it, it's slightly dependent on future cohorts of students and, and perceived need for that. But um, it, it's our way of, of sending a message to the students that, that all languages matter. In our school there are people from different countries and they speak different languages. So it's good for them to do their own language so that they get, get a credit for their own language so their language is not wasted. As time goes on there's more students of different nationalities. So basically they, it's easier for us to expand their languages so, it's, so you can add Polish or Arabic or Somali as the people come. Or even if Turkish comes, they can add Turkish or whatever, whatever helps them basically. It builds up confidence inside us because uh, we can, it makes us feel that we can do languages. We are also done Arabic in year nine and Somali, so I already got two to see for me that helped me to understand more. Because if you know a language, then it would be easy to learn other languages. That's what I think.